All right. Hello, welcome to the College of Complexes. I am Adam Balling, a sometime attendee and a frequent YouTube viewer as well, occasionally join online. Don't make it in as often to Dapper's East, but I'm glad I am here at the restaurant tonight. The format of the evening, as many of you may know, uh, will be for some announcements, followed by the presentation of our guest speaker, Justin Tucker, with a collection of his dank libertarian memes. Uh, full disclosure, I'm a friend of his and a political colleague. Uh, then we will have questions and answers with the audience members. And then in act three, the rebuttals and remarks by audience members, usually for a few minutes each. The two rules are one fool at a time and no personal attacks. And now I believe Mr. Paydock is gonna come up and do some announcements. Yeah. Well, all right, and welcome back in person. You on this one? You do the announcements, Charlie. All right. Let me share screen here, and we'll get it up. Okay. All right. Welcome to meeting number three thousand seven hundred fifty-nine of the College of Complexes, the playground for people who think. Um. Let's see here. We got nine upcoming. I think it's nine or 10 upcoming programs. And although I'm not a capitalist, I will give an advertisement for what we're gonna be hearing about. On March the 30th, uh, Fran Tom Tobin will be here to discuss <laughs> uh, the situation of long-term care. Very serious issue, long-term care for the disabled or the elderly, senior citizens important topic. In April, we start our, our Earth, Earth Month series of speakers. April the 6th, Andy Anderson will be talking about things that you, each of us, can do to stop climate change. On the 13th, we're going to hear from a, uh, a candidate for the U.S. Congress on the Green Party. He's representing the Xenials, so it should be an interesting evening. They want clean air and clean water. On April the 20th, the Green Party. One congressional district. I can't remember. Anyways. Uh, um, Champaign Urbana, whichever it happens. Out in Edwardsville, and it was changed district. Um, April the, okay, April the 20th, uh, the Illinois Green Party. Uh, state chair person will be here talk about their agenda. Um, on April the 27th, Henry Perez <laughs> will be talking about how you should vote for anybody, anybody for president of the United States except Joe Biden. And anybody, he says. On May the 4th, our special May Day speaker, uh, Joe, Joe, is going to talk about all the aspects of labor law, Taft Hartley, and other elements of employment legislation. So that's a good, exciting May Day speaker. May the 11th, um, Dean Knight will be returning. He's the author of a book, and he says he has a path, a path to peace. He knows how to write at peace. On May the 18th, uh, we're going to have two speakers uh, discussing the issue of nuclear reactors, nuclear waste, and transporting these around the nation. So storage and transportation of nuke juice. On May the 25th, um, the, um, we're going to be talking about uh, voting for the President of the United States and how the Republicans have a plan to steal your votes. They want to steal everybody's votes and have it rigged. On June the 1st, this book, uh, Tom O'Donnell will be here and he wants to know why everyone is poor. He can't figure that out. I could have told him why, but I'm gonna let him figure it out on his own. At least four dates open in June. Thank you very much, Tim. Take it away.
And uh, I'm glad to see Alexis is here tonight. All right. My good friend. You wanna any okay, you wanna make an announcement? Go ahead. <laughs> uh, we got another announcer coming up, so uh up front use the mic. Uh, the Uranium Film Festival will be in Chicago starting Thursday of next week, uh, where it will be at Loyola University, and they will be and we will be showing um, on the beach a, a film from 1957 about the worries people had about the end of the world because of nuclear war. So that's one thing that is the same today. And um, then it will be, then it will move to uh, Haymarket House and then to the University of Chicago at International House on Saturday. On Sunday, it's going to be at the Music Box. And uh, this will be the only program where you will be charged a fee. To go to the Music Box, you have to buy a ticket. And then the next one will be April 1st and it will be at the Evanston Public Library. So I have a list of all of the venues and the films that we'll be showing at each venue. They're going to be 12 or 13 different films and eight or nine short films. Um, so it's a big program and it goes on for five days. This is Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. So it's, it's a five day program and uh, it's a complicated program. So if you want to know anything about it, I brought flyers that uh, explain the different venues and the different films. Is it also online? This will be online at NEIS.org. Okay. And it will also be in line, online at a, a um, website, uraniumfilmfestival.org. But uh, the Uranium Film Festival has been going on for 13 years. It originates in Rio de Janeiro and has been a thing in Arizona, New Mexico, and um, points west for a long time. But this is the first year it's been in Chicago. So we've got a big deal coming for five days next week, and I hope you'll be interested in it. All right, I'm going to try to put it up online before we get the speakers started. So. Uh... Oh, and uh, this this is a um, twenty eight page booklet about all the different stuff that's going on in Chicago for the Uranium Film Festival. So if you're interested in that, you'll have to uh, contact me. I can send it to you online. Uh, my email is janbudar1 at gmail dot com, and it's J A N for Jan. Budar is B like baby, O U, D like David, A R, T like Tom, then the numeral one at gmail.com. And I'll be glad to send you this booklet and anything about the program that you're interested in. Any day that you could go, I'll be glad to send you the schedule. Is there, um, I'm getting the schedule up online now for the USA. Um, it's, it's uh, as you can see with the link there. I'll put it in chat in a minute, but it is uh, the International Uranium Film Festival Marathon across North North End. All the information is there for you. As you can see, I got it up there. And uh, the other site to look at is NEIS.org, yeah. which is also the, uh, I'll put it up real quick. Well, uh, NEIS is the sponsor in Chicago. That's the Nuclear Energy Information Service. Right, NEIS.org. And give me a second so we can pull that up too for them. And then we'll get our speaker started here in just a second or two. Um, Any films on thorium? I don't know if there is or not, but. Uh, uh, I don't think there's any films about thorium. Um, thorium has a long history in the United States and thorium has a long history internationally. Uh, but I don't think we have any films on reprocessing uranium, uh, or, or reprocessing spent fuel. Yeah. So um, maybe next year. Okay. Uh, you want to introduce Justin now? Yes. Thank you. 
please close the door. All right, we're going to get you online here in a minute, Justin, as soon as we get you properly introed. Yes. I'm going to mute you, Jake, if you don't mind. All right, so uh, as I mentioned earlier, I have known Justin Tucker personally for several years. He's been active in the libertarian movement for close to a decade. Um, I first met him during the 2016 presidential campaign. He was the chair of the Chicago chapter for four years. He's been the chair of the Central Committee uh, of the Libertarian Party in Cook County, uh, as well as executive director in the Libertarian Party in Illinois. Uh, petitioned for many causes, but he is also someone who's very engaged on social media. So we have a dank libertarian meme stash, a collection of political illustrations posted on social media. He has given presentations of his uh, memes and other online contents before. I'm interested to see what he has for us tonight. Let's welcome Mr. Justin Tucker. Take it away, buddy. All right, Justin, you're on. All right, thanks, Adam. Thanks everybody for being here tonight. Before I start, does anybody not know what a meme is? And I should also say, I, I encourage people to, who are maybe joining online, you guys can uh, unmute. I encourage, la you know, hearing laughter and hearing the interactions. Um, so uh, please consider that. But uh, yeah, who here does not know what a meme is? Why don't you explain it real quick, just in case? All right, I'm going to be very quick. So a meme is just an image, as Adam just said, that in the in the um, <clears throat> in the colloquial sense of the word, it's a image that's basically shared online and uh, conveys information, often in a humorous way. Not always, but often, and um, they are shared virally and spread. And uh, that is what a meme is. It's it's Richard Dawkins um, had first articulated the idea, um, but colloquially now it means images that are shared online um, on social media for fun. So, as Adam said, I've been involved with Libertarian Party of Illinois for for a very long time. Please consider joining the Libertarian Party of Illinois. You can go to lpillinois.org and click join. You can also make a donation by clicking donate. I also want to make you guys aware that starting on Tuesday, Libertarian Party will be circulating, starting to circulate its petition for its presidential slate. So um, Bill Redpath wrote this letter that uh, explains the importance of this drive, what to do. There's also a link to a copy of the uh, petition. And what you can do is you can print it off, circulate it, ask your friends to sign, and then you can mail it back to us or give it to Bill or, or one of us. Um, but again, that doesn't, we don't start that uh, legally. We can't start petitioning until Tuesday. So come Tuesday, please consider um, circulating uh, petitions for the uh, Libertarian Party. Okay, so um, is that full screen to everybody else? Yes, we can see it. All right, so yes, lpillinois.org, click donate. That's one way you can help us get on the ballot as well. Um, you know, we can, we can, uh, snag petitions from professionals and certainly a donation to Libertarian Party can help us in that regard. So, uh, last Tuesday we had a primary elections and I, along with three other gentlemen, uh, were elected as part of the first ever class of Libertarian Ward committee persons in Chicago. Uh, these are positions uh, for established parties, um, and so we flexed our established party status. Four of us got on the ballot, and we are all four part of this class. Um, I got 23 votes 
Uh, so this is the primary election. You had to ask for the ballot. In my ward, uh, you got a little slip of paper and you could check off which, which one you wanted. Um, so uh, there's how we did. I took a picture of this because, you know, I think electioneering is a victimless crime. If I, I'm not hurting anybody by being any closer or further away from a polling place, passing out literature. Uh, so I think these uh, laws are silly and we should abolish all electioneering laws. Here's my illegal, uh, here's my illegal ballot selfie or I voted for myself. Uh, you don't see it here on the other side, but I did also vote no on Bring Chicago Home. Uh, Bring Chicago Home, another socialist uh, scheme to raise taxes. Good thing it was struck down. One has a moral responsibility to disobey unjust laws. No man or group or society or government has the right to assume the role of a criminal and initiate the use of physical compulsion against any man. Ayn Rand. So uh, some other recent happenings also in the Libertarian Party of Illinois. Uh, Chris Laurent was just uh, started his first term as police district counselor in the 14th district. This is him uh, at a swearing in ceremony. This is him in action with his colleagues. So if you're ever in uh, the 14th district, uh, they usually meet on first uh, Saturdays around the 14th district. So come check out, see Chris in action uh, doing his thing. The Libertarian Party of Illinois also recently just had a convention uh, and uh, this was um, taken uh, from our presidential debate. Uh, we had several of the candidates show up. Um, there's the audience checking it out. This was at the Clarion Inn out in Elmhurst. Um, this is Jeff Charles, who is a writer for Newsweek. He also writes at Red State. He was one of our speakers. Uh, he's got a really awesome Twitter account. So. Jeff Charles, check him out. This was uh, our key, one of our other keynotes. This was Joe Jorgensen, who's the 2024, uh, or excuse me, the 2020 nominee. Um, so she was uh, one of the keynotes. Funny thing about Joe Jorgensen, um, she's a very sweet woman. Um, my mother, who recently deceased, she, uh, I, I recommended Joe Jorgensen to her. And then when I was later talking to my mother, my mother was telling me, about how she listened to Joe Jorgensen on a podcast and learned all about Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. So uh, thank you, Joe, for educating my mom on cryptocurrency. <laughs> all right. <clears throat> so here's some of the uh, memes that LP National has. I think LP National's uh, meme game is fairly, uh, fairly dank. One of the dank. Oops, come on. Excuse me. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. All right. So, libertarian foreign policy: don't hurt people and don't take their stuff. Armed minorities are harder to oppress. Supporting and keeping supporting the right to keep and bear arms for minorities helps fight back against systemic governmental injustice. Gets our allies of the state. We uphold and defend the right of every person, regard, regardless of their race, ethnicity, or any other aspect of their identity. This is taken from the Libertarian Party platform. And when you join Libertarian Party, you uh, you sign what's called the Libertarian Party Pledge, which says, I hereby certify that I do not believe in or advocate an initiation of violence as a means of achieving political or social goals. It's kind of similar to what Ayn Rand uh, said earlier in that previous meme. Um, the non-aggression principle could also be articulated as the golden rule. 
And here in this meme, you see uh, different scriptures throughout uh, the world articulating this concept. So non-aggression is a fairly universal concept, and uh, it's, it's the basis of libertarian party platform. Life, liberty, and property do not exist because men have laws. On the contrary, it was the fact that life, liberty, and property existed beforehand that caused men to make laws in the first place. Frederick Bastia, one of my favorite uh, political writers, the law is funny and packs a good punch. You can also, I talked to the college about that. So there's a video of me talking about it. Go look at it. Exposing truth is a service to liberty. That is whistleblower uh, uh, Edward Snowden, who exposed the surveillance state to the degree that it existed, and he is uh, now in exile. Hate begets state. Vile people make vile leaders. This is taken from the uh, Charlottesville rally with the tiki torches. Don't hurt people and don't take their stuff. If a child can understand this, why can't governments? Here's a quote from Ludwig von Mises. Socialism is an alternative to capitalism, as potassium cyanide is an alternative to water. <laughs> So here's Javier Malay. I'll have more Javier Malay meme memes later. But Javier Malay uh, was just recently elected president of Argentina. And he has uh, made a lot of cuts to the government. Uh, his critics call it austerity. But um, he's an economist, and he's the first libertarian elected president. So we'll see – you know, when people ask, you know, where have libertarians ever succeeded? We can hopefully look to Argentina and hopefully hopefully he doesn't make us look horrible. But here's here's uh, Javier Malay saying socialism is a violent is violent, murderous and impoverishing phenomenon. And he's not wrong. Myth. Rent control protects the poor from high rent. Truth. Rent control hurts the poor with housing shortages. And that's a good thing that we uh, shot down, bring Chicago home, because certainly that would have done nothing to help the housing shortages here in Chicago. Here's Ayn Rand. Capitalism has created the highest standard of living ever known on Earth. Yes, the evidence is, is incontrovertible. Yet those who are the loudest in proclaiming their desire to eliminate poverty are the loudest in denouncing capitalism. Man's well-being is not their goal. All right, here's uh, Ross Ulbricht. Ross Ulbricht, what he did was founded an organization, or not an organization, but a, a uh, internet, dark web, I'm not sure, I guess it's a website, not exactly sure. It's called Silk Road. And it allowed uh, you to purchase drugs um, and other things uh, through an encrypted sort of platform. Um, and you, you had to buy, I think you had to buy Bitcoin to even trade on there. But basically, he's in prison for, um, uh, for, for this. And he hasn't really committed any sorts of crime, really. Okay. He was selling drugs online. Oh, boohoo. It's not red versus blue. It's the state versus you. Here's Javier Malay again. The state does not create wealth. The state destroys it. The state can give you nothing because it produces nothing. And I'm actually learning Spanish so I can... Uh, Partially, so I can hear Malay speak these in his native tongue. Here's Mises again. The worst evils which mankind has ever had to endure were inflicted by bad governments. Snowden. I think I already shared this meme. We got it again. There's Snowden again. Exposing truth is a service to liberty. 
Um, so here's a uh, meme that kind of shows where Libertarian Party is compared to other parties. Um, I won't read that, but I guess you can real quickly. <laughs> Here's Michael Malice. You may see Michael Malice on Fox News and on podcasts and stuff like that. Um, my rights are not up for discussion, let alone a vote, whether it be 75% of the population, the will of one king, or the whim of 100 senators. Friedrich Hayek, formerly of the University of Chicago, Few are ready to recognize that the rise of fascism and Nazism was not a reaction against the socialist trends of the preceding period, but a necessary outcome of those tendencies. Jacob Hornberger, who was at our convention recently, who was running for president. If you are not free to choose wrongfully and irresponsibly, you are not free at all. Thomas Paine, who I think was a libertarian party member but uh we have him we have him quoted as saying there are two distinct classes of men in the nation those who pay taxes and those who live upon taxes and excuse me for that uh ambulance i do live close to a fire station and a police station so here's ayn rand again do not make the mistake of the ignorant who think that an individualist is a man who says, I'll do as I please at everybody else's expense. An individualist is a man who recognizes the enable individual rights of man, his own and those of others. Here's Hayek again. Economic control is not merely control of a sector of human life that could be separated from the rest. It is the control of the means for all our ends. Walter Williams Prior to capitalism, the way people amassed great wealth was by looting, plundering, and enslaving their fellow man. Capitalism made it possible to become wealthy by serving your fellow man. Here's Malay yet again. The enemy is socialism. The enemy is statism. The enemy is collectivism. And all those who are willing to fight that fight, we are all together. And yes, I am a libertarian, and yes, I would nitpick, and yes, I would probably... What's wrong with collectivism to Javier Malay? Uh, well, that's still a good quote if you are if you, if you define those words uh, the way, say, Ayn Rand would. Here's Ron Paul. I support the Black Lives Matter movement. Here's Friedrich Hayek. If socialists understood economics, they wouldn't be socialist. Here's Leonard Reed. Leonard Reed was the founder of the uh, Foundation for Economic Education, uh, better known as FEE. There is no moral distinction between the act of a pickpocket and the progressive income tax. Uh, this is uh, in light of some recent in the news um, happenings. All your freedoms all of the time includes illegal immigrants regarding guns. The right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Whoop. I didn't mean to include that one. Oh, go back. But I think I am done with that one. All right. So I also um, am a little meme smith myself. And there's this there's this um, Facebook group called Soup Posting that I often will post to. And I make memes that kind of have Ayn Rand um, themes to it. So um, if you're familiar with Seinfeld, you might get some of these jokes. Uh, I call it Einfeld. So here's George. He just picks up a copy of The Virtue of Selfishness. Objectivism. Finally, an ideology I can embrace. Uh, here's... Uh, 
here's uh Mr. Ross. Dagny Taggart has sex with them all. Here's Uncle Leo interrupting the PBS pledge drive. This is John Galt speaking. Oh. So this is Jerry. Uh, if you remember the low-fat yogurt episode, instead of low-fat yogurt, he's got We the Living by Ayn Rand. This is so bleeping good. Don't let anybody see it. Don't let anybody happen to it. And he's giving him Atlas Shrugged. In the original, it was Tropic of Cancer, I believe. Why can't there be things just for me? Is that so selfish? Actually, that's the definition of selfish. <laughs> he put it out. Atlas Shrugged, that is. Uh. Want to make a person feel better? You shouldn't say, God bless you. You should say, who is John Galt? <laughs> yeah. I think I can sum up the philosophy for you in one word. Selfishness. Um, this is, if you remember this episode, it's where George's talking about moving back in with his parents. Maybe this would be like a cool thing, objectivism. Then maybe selfishness will catch on. I think those are hilarious. If you're not into Ayn Rand or Seinfeld, you might disagree, but I think they're classics. Oak Duke. So this isn't so much a meme as a picture I took somewhere out in the Chicago burbs. I was in my car in Lake Zurich. All right. So that was, yeah, that's where it was. Uh, so it's kind of funny. They still have this sort of Reagan era dumb stuff. Plastered places. Uh, here's a picture of... Johan Norberg, who I met for a second time just recently uh, when Cato came to town. Ooh. Johan Norberg just released a book called The Capitalist Manifesto, yeah. and uh, he was in town to promote it, and it was a cool event. Me when the feds show up to steal my guns. I'm a Mandalorian. Weapons are part of my religion. Huh. <laughs> Biden says anti-drug policies harmed black communities and it was a mistake to support them. That was uh, November 2020. Biden seeks to snuff out menthol cigarettes. FDA banned to ban expected due to effect on minorities youth. And then that happened uh, not even a year later. So that was a bleeping lie. Libertarians, when anyone within a five mile radius complains about taxes, this is the way. <laughs> Mission on presidential debates, voters wanting better options. And then, of course, third party candidates muzzled uh, by the Commission on Public Debates, uh, Commission on Presidential Debates, excuse me. Was this Michaels or Lobby Hobby, something like that, in Hobby the film? Lobby. Characters <laughs> whose plans always fail miserably. Yeah, <laughs> Wiley Coyote. Uh, you got Tom. Or, yeah, Tom. That's Tom, right? And then you got Comrade Snidely Carl Whiplash. down here. I'm sorry? Snidely Whiplash. Mm. And then, of course, the other guy we all know. I want gay married couples to be able to protect their gas stoves with guns. Oh. Find someone who looks at you the way AOC looks at your paycheck. So here you got Karl Marx serving a meal. This is traditional food in my country. But Karl, the plate is empty. I know. So here's a Stimson's meme. The format basically is a say the line, and then somebody says the line, and then they all kind of laugh. In this case, it's say the line, and then you got like some like 
black block Antifa guy. Real communism hasn't been tried yet. And then, of course, they all laugh because it's funny. Chaz Chop. Perfect example. Proof that communism is better than capitalism. The proof is that their bread is the best. History has proven across co- communist countries that people have been willing to wait in line for hours and hours for that bread. <laughs> Yo, I'm going to seize one of those smokes real quick, bro. Carl Skidmarks. <laughs> so, this is kind of funny. When you use a little free library, you're reading socialism. What's funny about that is that I think it's <clears throat> mocks the notion that socialism is when stuff is free. So here you got Bernie Sanders, punk rock Bernie Sanders. I am once again asking if I can borrow your entire drum set. If you've ever been in a band with drummers, you would get that. Marxist Leninist who claimed to fight for the working class when the working class protest against a socialist, quote, democratic regime. Send the tanks. Don't tread on me. Well, here's uh, so there's a whole genre of memes. That's like <laughs> there's a whole genre of memes where it's like listen up, liberal, and then it like makes fun of like you know dudes who with sunglasses who make videos in their jeeps or like people who are into motorcycles or stuff like that. Here's a variation. This is Steven Crowder who was revealed to have been kind of verbally abusive to his wife, uh, made her like, I guess physically too, if he's making her do stuff while she's pregnant. But listen up, liberal, my wife left me. <laughs> when you hate capitalism, so you call it fascism, because you don't know what either one means. uh uh-huh. <laughs> Here's the IRS. By the way, this is the Doge meat. This is the Doge dogs. On the right, you have like the strong, like awesome Doge dog. Or, excuse me, on the left, you got this. Then on the right, you got the wimpy Doge dog. So, IRS, I will know if you don't report Venmo transactions over $600. Also, the government, we failed our fifth Pentagon on it. We don't know where that 2.1 trillion went. So here's the Punisher logo. Um, what's funny is like uh, cops and other like, you know, people have appropriated this logo. So here it's being uh, reappropriated. You are valid and worthy of love. College graduates when they earn their first paycheck. I don't want to play with you anymore. And he throws out communism. So this is in response to like uh, some members of the Libertarian Party who want to like not support Libertarian candidates. Whoa there. Round here, round these parts, Libertarian Party supports Libertarian candidates. So there's me. And my comrade, Dan Lewis, we're in the Pride Parade. We're on TV. Millions of people are watching us. It's pretty cool. (laughs) I don't know if you guys watch Stanley Kubrick films. The Kubrick Stare is one of Stanley Stanley Kubrick's most recognizable directoral techniques. A method of shot composition where a character stares at the camera with a forward tilt to complain to the audience that they are at the peak of their derangement. (laughs) You got you got Alex from A Clockwork Orange. You got Jack from The Shining. You got Private Pile, and then you got Donald J. Trump. So here here's here's another genre of memes similar to the. 
related to the listen here liberal memes, but it's uh, listen here, cuck. I've seen enough Fox News to know Mexicans going to sneak ISIS into NASCAR. <laughs> <laughs> so here you got communist ball with an iPhone and daddy's money. When you've never even set foot in a factory, have no engineering or business background, and can't put together flat pack furniture, but you don't, but you want to seize the means of production. <laughs> don't tread on me. <laughs> so there was that kid who, uh, I guess he got disciplined for wearing a, uh, a Gadsden flag on his book bag. I was making fun of that. So here you got some OnlyFans models. I hate how these e-girls swindle lonely, unsuccessful guys out of their money by offering them false hope and a fantasy. <laughs> I don't know who the names of these models are, but that bottom left-hand model is pretty cute. One of them is Belle Delphine. That's the gamer girl, bath water girl. Oh. Here's another variation on the Gadsden flag. Who can it be now? God. I'm sorry that some of these are smaller and bigger than others. Uh, you could resize them, Justin, with your camera phone. I was just about to say that. Yeah. But, uh, sorry, this one's really small. But what it says <laughs> is step one, destroy the state. Step two, and by the way, if you can't see it, it's it's the communist ball. Step two, create a new state. Step three, don't call the new state a state. Step four, to continue to die, the new state is a state, even though it acts just like a state. I think that's taking a, a, uh, a knock at Comrade Lin in there. So here's Jesus, thou shalt not steal. Everybody in this group, I'm stealing this meme. And then Jesus is going to, what's up, man? Why you gotta steal? Libertarians call um when they steal memes, they call it taxing. Yeah. I'm gonna tax it and, and redistribute too. So when you share it, you're redistributing it. Exactly. So you've got the distracted boyfriend uh meme here. He's checking out, he's a Cuban, right? So he's checking out Liberty. And then you got my communist barista at Starbucks who's jelly. But the Cubans are scoping out liberty. So uh, the guy in the bottom, or excuse me, the guy in the top right is a YouTube guy. His name is Mr. Beast. What he does is he basically gives a lot of his money away. He like digs wells in Africa and all sorts of other things. So here you got the communist NPC guy. The rich should give their fortunes to the poor. Okay. And then the communist NPC guy gets mad because he did it voluntarily. What is the most libertarian thing about Donald Trump? This is a Twitter poll. <laughs> bump stock <laughs> bump stock bans, vetoing the Yemen bill, reauthorizing NSA spying, airline bailouts. Those are just four things. I'm sure there's way more. I can't make I can't make it. I have plans. My plans. Oh. Being all snug and <laughs> being <laughs> virtuous selfishness. All right. <clears throat> Here's Javier Malay uh oh. <laughs> his chainsaw. <laughs> Viva la libertad, Kiarho. <laughs> He's got that Kubrick stare. Yeah. He does got the Kubrick stare. He's the one who took over Argentina, right? Yeah. Yeah. Was elected. Well, took over. Was he was elected. By the people. <laughs> Democracy. Yeah, That's All right. right. So we have, uh, so Steamboat Willie just went into the public domain. So you don't have to uh, <laughs> pay Disney royalties. To to uh, to do the, something like taxation of theft on Mickey. Here's Bono from the U2. If you if you're unaware, in dealing with poverty here and around the world, where welfare and foreign aid are a band aid, free enterprise is a cure. So 
So you get a lot, a lot of these people who are, I guess, uh, really angry about inflation, I think are blaming the wrong person. <laughs> uh, so here is, uh, here's a graph of when a bunch of money was printed and you'll see that it was under one particular president. I think you can blame all of them still. Sure. Uh, but I mean, the, the rate at which it had, you know. So here's Javier Malays giving a speech to the World Economic Forum where he basically uh, gave him a stern talking to. I told her it's Mozart. He's got the baby listening to Javier Malay. Here's, this is Javier Malay. He is traveling to Davos, Switzerland to be part of the Economic Forum and attract investments to Argentina. Do you notice something different? Yes, no luxury private plane. He's waiting to board a commercial flight like everyone else. A real man of the people like Bernie Sanders. Uh, so, so you know, you know, those action movies, you know, there's an explosion, the guy just walks away. Uh, kind of like Javier Malay at the World Economic Forum. He just drops a bomb and walks away like it's nothing. I've seen that same meme with Trump coming in, in the background that says Democrats. Oh, well. He's for a lot of stuff. Yeah. So here you got Drake, who's repelled by the thought of eating bugs. But what he does like is Javier Malay's cool chainsaw. Uh, hit me up for my pricing for my homeschool program. We're just going to show a bunch of kids some Javier Malay memes. Uh, so here at the top, you've got Ricky Gervais. Ricky Gervais uh, basically roasted the entire room as host of the Golden Globes, uh, often mocking them for their connections to pedophiles and, and Jeffrey Epstein and stuff like that. So similarly, you've got, he's similarly got Javier Malay roasting the econo uh, World Economic Forum. <laughs> so here you got baby, you got baby Cardi B. My mama said y'all only love season the means of production because establishing it would require consistent effort and personal sacrifice. And Cardi B's mom is absolutely correct. Here's Ludwig von Mises. He wrote a book called Liberalism. But for the liberal, the world does not end at the borders of the state. In his eyes, whatever significance national borders have is only incidental and subordinate. His only political thinking encompasses the whole of mankind. The liberal, therefore, demands that the political organization of society be extended until it reaches its culmination in a world state that unifies all nations on an equal basis. Whoa! Joe Jorgensen says, the harsh reality of the two-party system is that no matter who gets the nomination, the American people lose. So here you got one of these memes from Star Trek. Uh, and it's... um. This woman asks, "Are you two friends?" Uh, and this, you know, this meme is for a lot of stuff. But in this particular instance, it's she asks the libertarians uh, and MAGA people are if we're friends. Oh. Libertarians say no, and then MAGA says yes. Very Ben Shapiro. So here is a here is a sign that mocks some of those like <laughs> yupp, yuppie signs you see around Chicago. In this house, we believe in affordable housing. Unless the project is too big or too close to family homes or changes the character of the neighborhood or the developer makes a profit. And why does it have to be so look so boring? Joe Biden apparently recently said Milton Friedman isn't running the show anymore. And with the inflation rate over time, he says, absolutely not. 
me and my paycheck trying to figure out when the government worked half my shift. I, I read that almost as took half my blank. So here's uh here is Prince John from Disney's uh, Robin Hood uh, with his head superimposed on Bernie Sanders. Huh. I am once again asking for your financial support. Huh. Speaking of inflation. Remember what they took from you. I really do miss those. Uh, you could go into McDonald's and get a bunch of food for under five bucks. Now it's like five bucks for a Big Mac. Don't tread on anyone. So here's a, a guy wearing a hat. It says MAGA on it. And this is the, this is the, uh, the guy who has to pick between two buttons, usually revealing some sort of cognitive dissonance. In this case, he's got to pick between a button that says, I support states' rights, and another one says, I'm glad SCOTUS made Colorado put Trump on the ballot. No, oh, here's Jerry Seinfeld. Uh... And he's in his car with Prager <laughs> University. <laughs> you know you're not a university. College kids, after graduating and seeing the taxes from their first check, they go from Bernie into Javier Malay very, very quickly, as you can see. QAnon believers, when the big date comes and goes and literally nothing happens. Oh, yeah, it's all coming together. <laughs> from the Emperor's New Greek. Pay taxes on your income. Pay taxes when you buy your things. Pay taxes when you use your things. Pay taxes when you sell your things. And it just keeps going and going and then we'll cycle. Again, we have Javier Malay. If you don't fight for your freedom, they will drag you into misery. Don't surrender. Here's more of MAGA after the gun immigrant dealie. Our rights come from God, not from government. Okay, arm the immigrants. And then his head explodes. Oh. <laughs> you got Toby Hooper. <laughs> or not Toby Hooper. Uh... Toby McGuire. Toby Hooper is the director of Texas Chainsaw Massacre. You've got Toby McGuire here, uh, better known as Spider-Man, enjoying writing down some things. Karl Marx writing a utopian fantasy book while his son is starving to death. Trump wasn't responsible for January 6th. It was the FBI. Donald Trump oversaw the FBI during January 6th. Oh, here's here's more of that listen up, liberal. Right. Listen up, liberals. The Bible says crank not yes be cranked yourself. All right. So uh, here you got a Barbie Heimer reference, uh, if you recall. <laughs> Barbie, uh, you know, both those movies opened on the same day. Uh, so you got you got a really depressed and somber uh, Robert J. Oppenheimer living under socialism. And you got Barbie. She's got her car and cool house living under capitalism. Hey, here's me uh, with a couple of awards from people in our chapter. Uh, Chris Laurent, Award Libertarian Rookie of the Year. Uh, as you recall, he's the first uh, elected libertarian in Chicago. And then Michael Murphy won the Outstanding Young Libertarian Award. You can vote for him in in November, if you live in Cook County, for uh, your uh, clerk of the circuit court. So here's what an insurrection means. A violent uprising against an authority or government. An act or instance of revolting against civil authority or an established government. An organized attempt by a group of people to defeat their government and take control of their country, usually by violence insurrection an act of 
or instance of rising and revolt, rebellion, or resistance against civil authority or an established government. Just throwing it out there, just what those words mean. Um, I meant to share this one earlier, but hey, me, Nico Satsoulis, uh, Jim Hume, and Danny Lewis, this is our blurb when we were just in Politico the other day. So, um, Politico gave us a, uh, we were on their radar and they pointed us out in their newsletter. Didn't someone call you to congratulate you? Yeah. So, um, one of my, uh, comrades, uh, who I, who I worked with, uh, circulating petitions for common cause, uh, Pat Quinn gave me a call and said, Hey, uh, congratulations. Then he, he made me hip to another petition. He's, he knows somebody's going to circulate. So I look forward to working with my comrade, Pat Quinn, again on common interests and goals. Former governor of Illinois, a Democrat who believes in democracy. Okay, so we got um, we got Kid Rock shooting up some Budweiser. <laughs> and then later on, he's staring at that Budweiser quite romantically i guess i could say what politicians uh, say during campaigns versus what they actually do uh this is uh i believe this is taken from gallup or this was uh another one i think it, one of those polling organizations but support for a third u.s political party up to 63 percent um I don't know if you guys are big into the movie Dr. Zhivago, but wow. I am. Uh, the face when you risk your life hiking miles and miles through snow after deserting the Red Army after they drafted you to fight in the Civil War, and you come home and find your wife and child have left Russia, so now you can be with your mistress. Wow. Okay. Uh, I think it's funny. <laughs> Okay, here's Joe Jorgensen. If you only support the Second Amendment when it applies to people who look like you, you don't understand the Second Amendment. Another reference to the recent uh, gun controversy. Whoa. What? Am I out? Am I done? That makes the fancy suggestion you might be. Are you willing to take questions now? Yeah, it's been almost an hour. I, I think the last time I was, uh, I think I, I overstayed my welcome last time. So yeah, we, we can move into Q and A. Sure. All right. You want to a round of applause? Yeah, I'm going to let. Uh, you want to moderate the questions tonight? Well, we have, um, um, shall we say, uh, enough elbow room in our attendance here that we might not need one. Okay. And I'm going to have to visit the facilities, but I'd like to open with a question, if I may. Uh, Mr. Tucker, what about uh, something that I have found bizarre? I know you're much more savvy with social media than I am. I'd like your opinion of something strange in the world of shared online still images. The idea of NFTs or non-fungible tokens is basically means that people would not only sell for money, but actually treat in some ludicrous way as a sort of faddish investment, like, uh, ooh, maybe this meme is gonna go up in value in six months and I could use it as a form of currency. So could you give us your insights on that one? Yeah. And thank you again for a fun presentation. Okay. Um, to be quite honest, I have no idea how any of that stuff works. I have no idea what gives NFTs their value. I have no idea how you transfer it or anything. I, I honestly couldn't tell you. Maybe somebody else in the audience knows the answer, but I do not. And I'll just say the former president of these United States, who's running again, was selling these last year before the big crash in the non-fungible token market <laughs> where you could buy, I don't know if you want to dial them up because they burn my eyes, but where it, it, like, if people have not seen them, they're like drawings of superheroes and action movie heroes with Donald Trump's head imposed <laughs> on it. And it's one thing if this is 
sort of joke imagery that people are sharing with each other, like a you know, sort of electronic political poster. But it's another, if they're like, wow, this picture of Donald Trump as a bodybuilder could be worth more money next year than it is now. It is the most delusional thing I think I've ever heard. Well, Anyhow, if I could set up the next question before I run off. Well, the thing is, you I... remember that that's what people value. And if they're, if there's enough trust in that value, it'll it'll sell. Uh, but but it sounds well. We'll, we'll do that in rebuttals, maybe. Uh, Alexa, do you have a question? Oh, I was going to say I could speak a little bit to NFTs. Uh, you didn't sit your rebuttal. Yeah, I don't, I don't totally derail the Q and A train now, but it, I, I I look forward to your wisdom later. Well, Alexa, maybe you can explain what an NFT is and give your thoughts in lieu of just not uh, knowing exactly what it was. And if you don't mind showing yourself and being nice, Alexa. Okay. Yeah, I'll show I'll show my face again. Okay. Yeah. So, to my understanding, NFTs were initially started as a way to um, promote uh, content creators slash artists who, in di digital media because, you know, you can design, like, these really cool graphical things and, you know, say what you want about Donald Trump having, you know, being superimposed onto a muscular dude, but I guess, I don't know, I mean, if somebody drew that by hand or whatever, you know, that's, that is art. It's not, you know question the artist's thing but but yeah that, that's that was apparently the purpose of them was to support um digital content creators and artists uh however they've kind of become a joke and they've also led to like all kinds of copyright issues in terms of like some people were like there were nfts from uh pulp fiction Quentin Tarantino's movie and that was like it's not not a very it sounded like a nice idea in theory and a way to support people who otherwise don't usually get a lot of money for their craft but uh, in actuality has not worked out well thank you for the insight so it sounds more akin to like um yeah, artists selling a painting, but right, I could see if there's a glut of Velvet Elvis paintings. Yes, exactly. Or kids scribbles on the placemat, even though I didn't bring my daughter tonight, was probably less well, that's some marketable that, value. Um, some of these so-called artists are nothing better than kids scribbles. Now, should I get us back right back to Q and A? Uh, who, who who may have the next question? Uh, Vic. Yeah, Vic. Do you want to come up to the thing? Yeah, podium come yeah come on up so they can hear y'all on the uh right. out in out in uh yeah hey there uh justin i thought uh some of those it looked like one of the sections of your meme presentation were ones that you made and uh i was i thought a good number of them were actually very good i thought some of them were very smart and on point and incisive and then some were like just straight up hilarious so i just wanted to uh, uh acknowledge your efforts there and say that you did a good job with that um i do have a, a couple of questions i'll try to um get through them as quick as i can uh you mentioned something about electioneering laws and getting rid of them i hadn't actually considered whether they're good or bad or whether you know it's a victimless crime as you said or whatever um, so I don't know enough about a case for or against electioneering laws. Could you, if you had to steel man the case for election laws, fully acknowledging that you don't think they're good, if you had to steel man the case for that, what would that case be? Um, I guess my steel man would be that um, that it it cuts down on aggressive sort of campaigning, uh, sort of uh, maybe too, it might influence people too much. I, I, it might sway them when they otherwise would not, uh, perhaps as a barrier to ensure that people aren't being blocked from voting. 
So you know, not only harassment from people who are like, hey, you're taking, you know, vote for this guy, but also like maybe people who might, no, you can't vote, period, uh, perhaps. Um, uh, that's, I mean, I'm sure I can maybe think of others. Those are, those are a few that off the top of my head I can, that, that pop out at me. Okay, fair enough. Um, you met there, there was a meme that had uh, Ron Paul saying that he supported the Black Lives Matter movement. Do you know when he said that and what context? Like, you have a uh, you yeah, have, the context like, was abortion, actually. Um, I don't remember exactly when, I think it was probably like in the 2010s, so before George Floyd. Uh, but he was specifically talking about abortion, actually. Uh, he was lamenting the fact that uh, many, many black folks were were performing abortions. Oh, so they, oh, so it wasn't like, oh, I see. OK, so it was a play on BLM and it was sort of like a anti-abortion message because of the high proportion of uh, aborted black babies or something like that. Am I getting that right? That is the context. Gotcha. Okay, thank you. Um, Mises, did he really support a world state like legit? That was his quote. Um, I'm sure there's did a little more nuance if you were to read the uh, entirety of the passage. Let me see if I can find it real quick. Okay. So that's page 145. It doesn't say what which uh it doesn't say which edition. Okay. Um but yeah, I mean that's I'm that's quoting him right from there. Gotcha. Do do do, do libertarians and or the libertarian party you agree with what Jesus said on that? Like do they think a world state is a good thing and we should like like, for example, America should relinquish its sovereignty in favor of, like, an international government like the UN or something? Um, I'm not sure uh, exactly if, if uh, Mises is – I don't I – don't, I mean, I don't know if he ever said relinquish sovereignty. Um, but I imagine – I mean, uh, let me think – I mean, I, I like to think the United States of America, the Constitution – I've said this before, perhaps here, that international treaty where uh, there's extradition laws, there's currency, there's the collective defense, there's, you know, guarantees that, you know, you're, you know, States can't uh, violate, you know, do certain things to violate your rights, that sort of stuff. Um, so I already kind of look at the United States as sort of being similar to to that. I imagine, um, like, I don't, th I mean, so, I mean, I guess you can say that we, this, you know, just by being in the United States of America, the states have already kind of relinquished sovereignty. Okay. Uh, so we can have, you know, what I, you know, all the things I just listed above. Okay. I have like maybe one or two and, and, uh, then I'll be done and just, uh, thank you to everybody else for, for putting up with it. Um, oh, and hold on, let me, I didn't, uh, yeah. so to, and, and I think you, to answer a, a, another part of your question, pardon me, you said, is that a popular position within the LP? Oh yeah. I have yeah, not yeah, done an actual poll. Um, I would say, uh, I would say from what I can gather from what I hear people say that they would be against sort of one world government. Um, I would, yeah. Uh, but, uh, you know, libertarian thought is very diverse as illustrated by this Ludwig von Mises quote. And it's very possible he may have changed his mind on it. I don't know couldn't tell you because i haven't read everything that mises wrote gotcha <clears throat> but um yeah i mean this was also he he wrote this at you know in the interwar period so i'm sure world war one was fresh in, in in a lot of people's heads and i'm sure a lot of people were very you know we've seen what what 
kind of jingoistic nationalism does. Um, so perhaps, you know, per, you know, I, I think that he was writing this with that background. Got so, it. uh, you know. Okay. Um, I saw there were two memes that, um, if I'm not mistaken, the like sort of uh, pink and baby blue colors, you know, especially if you see it on a flag that that represents like trans or trans people or trans rights or trans movement or whatever it is, right? Um, one of the memes had, was like a snake that had those colors and another one was like the flag, but it had the libertarian porcupine on it or something like that. Um, I guess my question is, do does the libertarian party or do libertarians, small out libertarians, either one, do they have a position on transitioning minor children and puberty blockers and, and stuff like that? Um, I'm not sure if there's an official position. I think that uh, what most people would say probably is consenting adults can do what they want with their own body. They own their bodies. If they want to transition, uh, people are certainly welcome to do it. I'm sure a lot of libertarians would also be against any sort of, uh, you know, fun, you know, public funding for transitioning or, or things like that. Sure. Um, I personally would not recommend transitioning children. <laughs> um, for the same reasons, like we don't let children do a lot of things. So would libertarians be okay with a law that made it illegal for parents to decide to transition their minor children? That made it illegal right. to transition? Their minor children. What do you mean by transition? Going from a female to Gender a male. reassignment surgery, puberty blockers, you know, irreversible steps to alter the physiology of minor children. I'm not talking well, about. I'm sure some of them oh, would. I, I don't know. Clear, I, I can't. Clear, wait, hold on. Just to be clear, I'm not talking about like, because I know there's like degrees of transitioning. I'm not talking about like, oh, you know. The boy is dressing up like a girl and he's acting like a girl and wants to be referred to with a girl's name. You know, like, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about irreversible physiological changes, things done through, say, surgeries, puberty blockers, things like that. I don't or know what all other libertarians do. say. I don't, I mean, I can only, the only thing official that I can point to would be from our platform or other statements. I don't see any statements that say that 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 just other than uh, uh, yeah I don't I can't point to anything that says it supports children doing it, um, but I would imagine that I'm going to guess that many of them, myself included, would recommend not doing that sort of stuff if you were a if you were not an adult. Can I okay. cut in to say, I believe at our... So this is, the, I mean, I hate the, I know we're having kind of like a open forum here a little bit, um, but I would still like to keep que it to be questions. Does Alexa have any information that will further answer his question? <laughs> but but the, here's yes. the thing, it's it's I'm the guy answering the question. Okay. All right, Justin, I'll defer to you. Um, Sorry. Let me, you know, uh, that's it. That's all I've got. Uh, thank you, Justin, for taking all my questions. And once again, thank you for a, I enjoyed this presentation of your meme stash and especially the section where it was your homebrew memes. I thought some of them were very clever and very good. So thank you again, Justin. You're, hey, thanks. And I also to, to uh, that, so that Mises quote is from the League of Nations chapter uh in uh or the it's for it's in his liberal foreign policy chapter the sub the sub chapter on the league of nations just right. so you know all right charlie go ahead okay you uh, might ask 10 or 20 questions you can 10 or 20 questions or 30 you can't time in sequence well, no bring them charlie 
Yeah, go ahead, Charlie. <laughs> back, hey. off, back off a little bit. Here, hang on. Just, just. Justin. Go ahead. All right, Justin. Um, you, you sort of emphatically dismiss uh, voting for this referendum. Uh, that would mean the government would do something to alleviate homelessness. And we've had multiple programs at the college that would indicate the total number of homeless people in the city is woefully underestimated. People are moving in with their friends, relatives, uh, sometimes homeless people <coughs> get together. So you are vehemently opposed, but I did not hear anything advanced from the libertarians that I'm aware of that would alleviate the condition of homelessness. You are opposed to it. So what alternative <coughs> is the Libertarian Party <coughs> advancing instead? So what was your question again, I'm sorry? What is the Libertarian Party advancing instead of the referendum to eliminate the incidence of homelessness in the city? So what, so what the Libertarian Party would do is to cut as many taxes as possible and to cut as many regulations as possible that make it feasible for people to develop and create more homes so that people can then move into them and not be homeless anymore. They don't, so the answer, if I'm correct, is to cut taxes? Is your, well, I mean, uh, yeah, yeah, cut the, taxes. The because the people have taxes to eliminate taxation and regulation to eliminate this nebulous taxation and regulation is going to make, address the problem of homelessness. If you have no program, why don't you say, we have no program. But I still don't understand why you would oppose something if you have nothing instead. Well, that's a false premise. You do have stuff. There's tons of programs out there to help homeless people. Uh, you're you're making the assumption. That you're be, are you going to let me answer? Are there government programs? Yeah. But you're opposed to funding government programs for the homeless. I don't understand why. And you offer no homeless, no alternative plan. Don't Is that you your question? Deliver, as far as I'm leaving, right now, the Libertarian Party does not care whether you are homeless or not. This is where I'm at right now. Tell me if I'm wrong. Yeah, you're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Will you let me? I pose the question. Okay. It definitely was about homelessness. It's the Libertarian Party does not care about homeless people. I read the ballot. And they offer no alternative. I asked the guy here. He said he's a spokesperson. Nobody else. He just said that a minute ago, right? And so you don't care if people live in the alleys or die in the street. All no, right. I'm, I'm, I care if people are homeless. I just don't think killing the housing market and making housing more affordable and making Chicago less attractive for people to invest in property <laughs> is going to solve homelessness. Zoning laws, excessive zone of zoning laws, preventing more zoning building houses. Laws. Can't build a bigger it's building a Government zoning law. laws, you know, preventing the building of houses laws. and shit. Is a solution to homelessness. No, I was saying the zoning laws are bad. We need to get rid of them. Well, people can't. People, uh, people are homeless because they don't live in homes, right? Why well, I don't boy, this is a tough question now. What is a homeless person? Gee, I never thought of that. Okay, so you don't think wouldn't much it logically charity? follow that if you make housing more question. available, that it you might alleviate no, that no. issues? You don't really care what happens, as far as I'm concerned, that the Libertarian Party took a position on an issue 
and yet offered no alternative. All right, no problem. Next question is, since you get a dozen questions here, we had a lot of memes that concern ethics. And there's a lot of poor people in the world. They don't have a lot of money and there's probably poor people exceed by tenfold the number of rich people. And somebody said, should we should take from the rich and give to the poor? The Libertarian Party, of course, is never doing that. And it's is not, the Libertarian how Party... Do they, how do they tell people, to all the poor people, what they should do to alleviate their situation? What does the libertarian? What should the libertarian people tell poor people? Yeah, it said, "Should we shouldn't we take from the rich and give to the poor?" You seem to so say that. I think that libertarians allowed. would. You don't allow that. You don't want that, right? So what? Hey, you you, I I can't keep track of how many questions you've answered you've asked that I haven't been able to answer yet. I'm off. So we'll started. we'll try to start. Um, to we'll take one problem. one at a time. All right. What question do you want me to answer first? Go ahead. I, well, which question do you want me to answer? Well, is it ethically correct to alleviate suffering in the world? Yes. So, oh, you can take from the rich and give to the poor, right? Under no, which, because of the so a, then, an obligation to do so. No, because um, a duty. Are you gonna Are you gonna let me answer? And t is Tim gonna ever gonna moderate? He's not here. Is anybody else going to moderate? Tim, okay. are you let me yeah, answer? I can moderate. Charlie, shut the fuck up. Oh, no. With all due respect. Okay. So, uh, yes, because so to to uh, to confiscate property from people also uh, causes suffering. It does from a rich person who has five homes. Is their property? Uh, is it because they have five homes? They, they, they can. The state can cause them more suffering than others. That's suffering. What? That you define that as? If so, if the government comes and takes one of my five homes, you consider that suffering. Is that your property? If I stole from you, is that suffering? And you didn't answer the question. You don't answer with a question. Is taking a, a home away, one of five homes away from the sovereign, does that make them suffer? I did already answer this question. Is, I said well, that yes taking no, people's property causes suffering. I didn't hear it. Yes or no? I is already said yes. Definition of suffering. Suffering. I'm sorry. Taking <coughs> a, one home. From a rich person, does that make them suffer? Yeah, it does make them suffer. Oh, jeez. <coughs> hey, Charlie. Oh, um, one right. pull at a time, and let's That's stick it to the questions, please. Operating in. <laughs> at what level are you operating in? Do you not have an obligation <coughs> to alleviate suffering? In any way possible. Yeah, if you can, sure. I mean, we're talking about all these people <coughs> who are living outside in the element. They're hey, Charlie, kidding. how many of them live in your on your couch? Yeah. Or on your floor? Why are you talking about me? I think well, you you all right, you're the one who's saying well, I, that, I, I that people have you, an obligation to alleviate suffering. Matter of fact, I could give you a story about the number of people I have had, I brought into my home that even my sister kicked out. So you you better not ask questions for something you don't know what you're talking about. Okay. Okay, well, either, I mean, if, if, if we're going to alleviate, if alleviate, if alleviating poverty or suffering is a moral imperative, then you would, we should do everything we can at all times to alleviate suffering, correct? All right, I'll let you go. All right. Justin, you guys, if you take from the rich, it's not suffering, pals, and it's not criminal. It may be a mild discomfort. Is this a question? Get it correct. 
All right. Hey, my this is this a fucking question, if Charlie? Comes, uh, if you take ten dollars uh, from a guy with a million dollars, he doesn't suffer. Come on. Okay, okay. That's silly. We're gonna have to uh right. Um you guys you guys really took right now I'm gonna have to do a quick reboot, Justin. So I'm gonna assign the host of the Zoom call to you. We'll be back as soon as I get up from this thing because this internet this internet connection is gonna be going to be toast in a few minutes and I gotta renew it because it's we're using the uh, one right now next door off of the store, and they only allow about two hours on. So I'm just going to have to uh, reboot real quick, and then we'll go. We'll continue with the questioning. So first, Alrighty. Justin is temporary host until I get back online. That way, we don't lose the Zoom connection. So just bear with me, please. All right, Justin, I'm going to make you host, and then we'll be offline for a few minutes, and then I'll. Uh, that are frozen in time, 1971, people from they okay. came up with their, with their platform. All right. Justin, you're now host. All I'm gonna, right. I'm going to reboot real quick, and we'll be back online shortly. All right. Sorry, Justin. Oh. I, I didn't mean to. I apologize for me trying to provide context to the answers to some of those questions. I didn't mean to like infringe well, on your You don't have to apologize. Thing. It's just I'm trying to keep it. I just try. I just like to keep the college to its format. Because if you don't, then you got Charlie who just stands up there and chaos reigns. Fair enough, I guess. Like, I, um, you don't have to apologize. It's fine. Okay. But I guess is there anybody? You know, instead of waiting for Tim to reboot, does anybody have a question for me on the call? Who has not answered has the question. And I guess Alexa, you can too. Um, I mean, I guess I'll say, are you aware that um, during our Illinois? And no one's gonna see this, I guess, until the video actually airs. people will see this. Yeah, but, well, until the video airs. But uh, are you aware that um, at the Illinois Libertarian presidential debate at our, that convention a couple weeks ago, um, that when asked about um, whether or not minors should be undergoing gender reassignment surgery, I believe all seven of the candidates present. Um, out of nine total candidates for um in the primary for libertarian president, I are you aware that they all said that they do not think that minors should be getting gender reassignment surgery? I, so no, I mean I listened to so I was outside of the debate hall because I um was working the registration table. So I could only hear what I could hear when I was listening. So that particular question, I was not able to hear. And um, if I knew that, that most of the candidates had answered that question, you know, all oh. if I, if I knew, you know, if I knew that, then I would have, I would have mentioned that to uh, Victor. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. And uh, maybe he, I don't know if he read, uh, maybe during your rebuttal or whatever, you can mention that uh, so Victor can can hear that. I put it in the chat. I don't know if anyone's going to like look at it, though. Also, Bernie Sanders has multiple homes. And right. uh, yeah, Charlie being Charlotte. That's fair. Uh, sorry, I said that guy. That guy really grinds my gears. In case you weren't well, aware, of that, I mean, right? if he if he does it, then then he's doing. Then <laughs> he does it because because that's what he. I mean, he's trying to trigger you. So I I uh, don't let him. I don't uh, try to let him bother me. 
I don't know, moron. Someone being moronic triggers me, I guess. Especially you gotta also remember that there's no personal attacks here, so... And this I is still being recorded, attacking. so... I told him to shut the fuck up respectfully. Okay. So I'm not sure how much Tim is gonna edit this out, so I would just... Don't say that word. Proceed with caution. Okay. Ooh. I have another question. Sure. Why did you show the picture of you with those two absentee awards, but you didn't show the picture of the people, the other people with the awards that were there that received them? So, I mean, it, it wasn't an intentional decision. I was, as I was preparing this, I was just going through my my stash and I was like, oh, there's a picture of me with da 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 I'll just I meant to actually throw it in the beginning of it, but I didn't uh into my introduction. But I uh I didn't. So it was just a very hasty like, oh that's a cool picture, download. I didn't put any thought into it. I didn't make a conscious decision to exclude the picture with everybody. So I'm just, don't I'm just... don't feel slighted. If no, I'm I'm giving you a hard time, dude. That's that's okay. all it is. Do you have a, another question? Perhaps one that's uh, a more legit question. Um, who made the 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 first like five memes um, that you showed? Which memes were those? It was towards the beginning. Uh, a couple of them involved the Mandalorian. Oh yeah, you made them. And you, yeah. I like how you called me out to do name dropping. I didn't really. <laughs> I mean, I thought that was cool as heck that Pat Quinn called you and congratulated you. Well, I mean, I mean, it is know. cool, but I, I also, I'm also fairly modest. I mean, it just, I, I guess... try to be... It's fair. I guess that's why I asked you, and, you know, like I said, I mean, you know, for people, you know, your pinkos like Charlie, who are all like, oh, hey, you know, libertarians are these horrible, selfish people, and blah, blah, blah. It's like, well, actually, former Governor Pat Quinn <laughs> supports um, these libertarians being elected, so... Maybe you're, you know, wrong. Just saying. I'm pretty sure that dude supported Pat Quinn for governor. Then I just I have no idea. Like he probably did. I have no clue. I mean, there's no way he supported a Republican. Any other questions from people who are uh, not me not in the restaurant? I think Carrie said he had to leave like at five thirty, so I don't even know if he's on still. Do you have another question? Because um, kind of, uh, this dead air is kind of yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of a good question. Um, I was not expecting dead air. Um, hmm. Okay. Uh, do you believe that um, Chicago's extremely strict zoning laws um, play a role in, especially when it comes to building houses and building apartment complexes, especially like that, that one dude who was, that one uh, alderman who was all like, oh, I've never approved of a building more than three stories high. Um, do you think those contribute to homelessness, these strict zoning laws? Certainly. You, it 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 decreases your housing supply 
if you're wanting to maximize, if you're wanting to maximize, uh, you want to eliminate homelessness. Yeah, then maximize your your have more homes. Your way that you can make it easy to build homes. I mean, that's literally it's a there's it's 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 a uh, and there's I I should have brought it, but I saw a chart the other day that was like showed correlations between the housing supply and rates of homelessness. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, we're back, we're back so Justin. We're talking about the. Do you want to Charlie? It's just oh, you, you know, you voted against this bill, which means uh, you don't care about homeless people. Alexa, I know we were. Uh, I know we were offline. We're now back online. We're gonna resume protocols. Go ahead and get up and ask your question. Uh, oh, I'm done with the questions. I we were just trying to kill the dead air time. Well, that's okay. We're we're, we're now back on air. So, all right. Hmm. Okay, right. my here's my question about poverty in Chicago and poverty in Africa and South America, and uh, the the people in my neighborhood, many 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 of them are from Venezuela and they're staying at the Motel Six on Sheridan Road, hmm. and um and I know they came because of the policies in Venezuela that our government has promoted and has disrupted yeah. their lives and their way of being. And so they think they think that they uh, will have a better life. They think they're gonna have a better life here. So far not, but you know, they're hoping. And so, you know, um, I'm not saying that this is an argument against capitalism per se, but the way the way capitalism works, and I, I believe, but have no data that um, Alexander Hamilton really tried to forestall this happening. Uh, okay, I've got a bunch of uh, things going on in my head that I have no proof for that are just imaginary that are stories I made up. So I have to try to skip those. My prophecies. They're not even that. It's not even that dignified. Um, but People, when they become uh, successful, as far as our culture goes, it doesn't, uh, they're never satisfied. Their greed continues to increase. And as they get more money, they want more money. Now, I don't think that's everyone, but it's enough people that as things stand now, about half of the national money is held by about six people or six corporations or six people are in, in the hands of six. Whereas the other half is for the rest of us. And um, I, uh, I'm, I'm wondering what your answer is when capitalists do this, what, what is your solution to the idea that people who acquire large amounts of capital and then oppress everybody else because they have now they have money and power, which is what they've always wanted. Um, is this a characteristic of human beings or is it a characteristic of capitalism? And, uh, you know, I'm a biologist and I know that um, when when um, birds are nesting and foxes get into the nesting area, they will just they will go through and break the eggs in ten or twelve nests. You know, much more eggs than they can eat. They just go through and and break the eggs, and it, it it's a characteristic of just you know having fun. And um, it bothers me that the human being seems to be greedy and take for themselves, and they don't mind seeing the suffering of others. I, uh, my biggest example of this right now. Is, Sorry, uh, do you have a question? You are you? Yeah, or, okay, my question is what? What? My 
my question is, do you agree with me that this happened? And do you have something? What would you do about the fact that once a person begins to accumulate, they take the money of everybody else and then other people are not able to even make a living? All right. Uh, so first off, um, let me let me. So you had started off by talking about migrants. What ha what did the United States do in Venezuela that caused them to move here? Sanctions and the coup attempt, I think, is what you're referring to. Sanctions and the coup attempt. Is that what the migrants said? The migrants did not do that. Do you not? Oh, you can just take Honduras. The 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 lie. Well, I'm sorry. You you said the reason. I'm I'm just curious. I'm at so why so so we started a coup attempt, and that's why the migrants came here. Is that what you're saying? You know something. I'm much more familiar with Honduras. Okay. All right. Th all right. But but to answer your question. Uh, do, um, do, well, first off, I would say the migrants are here because their government is shit, has nothing to do with the United States, has all to do with socialism being awful, you and Hugo are... Chavez and his thug, uh, limo driver who succeeded him, uh, basically pillaging and, uh, robbing that country. I think that the desire to be powerful and to be able uh, to want to oppress something is not a capitalist thing. I think that it's a human nature thing. Yes, I yes, think that, uh, uh, okay, I'm answering the question. And so, uh, so, um, so, you know, this, 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 this phenomenon that you're pointing out is you can find it in any system. Is and... what? Excuse me. Uh, hey, just a second. Ellen, you know, I can't hear him. Do you mind? Uh, what did you say, Justin? I said that the reason why Venezuela, the migrants are coming here is because Vene they, the socialists have wrecked Venezuela and they, they were, they've they accumulated the wealth by stealing it, making mm -hmm. enriching themselves, making everybody else poor. Um, root, you know, uh, making their currency worth garbage. People are leaving crime is horrible people can't eat and everything that hugo chavez and maduro have done is everything that you described as somebody doing so it has nothing to do with uh has nothing to do with capitalism it has everything to do with people who it has to do with humans who want to 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 uh, oppress and control people and i mean you say accumulate you said accumulate, and then a couple words later, you said uh, uh, take or whatever. Uh, so I mean, I mean, if if somebody is if somebody makes their money honestly, um, and you know is otherwise not an evil person, I don't see uh, anything wrong with them. Uh, keeping their money i mean they earned it fair and square if they didn't lie or cheat or screw somebody over to do it then hey it's theirs um I, okay let me just i just have one story we were we were at the financial district at um, uh jackson and uh lasalle and uh, we were it, it, it was a few years ago, and we were down on the sidewalk yelling, we are the 99%. We are the 99%. And the people up in the windows in the offices um, put up signs there saying, we are the 1%. Huh. And I thought that was really, really interesting, That's true. that they were really bragging about being part of the 1%. And, uh, and also, I, I had a teacher who said, I just worked so hard. And what he worked so hard at was shuffling money around and, you know, figuring out a way to get profit when he wasn't doing any actual work that contributed to um, the better, you know, he didn't make anything or he didn't bend his back. He sat at a desk and shuffled papers and figured out how to. Are you asking another question? I'm not asking another question. I'm okay. Just... If you're not asking another question, can, can we ask, can yeah, we, uh... on. let's move on. All right. Uh, Okay. Uh, 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 do you want to go to Ellen? Do you have a question first? Okay. I have more of like, like 
What did he have? 20 questions? Well, wait, wait. Well, oh, I get 20. Everybody gets 20. 20. He said it's okay. Well, what months. the thing is, is that we were, were stacking it towards all libertarians, all justice. <laughs> all right, now, Ellen. Let, all right, Charlie, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, uh, last, <laughs> last week. Last week, I have to show up. It's been four years, okay? Mm -hmm. All right, Ellen. 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 Hey. Ellen. Four years. Ellen. That's the truth. Let's let's okay. Have you tried getting you tried getting censored before okay. you? I will gladly take Ellen Corley's questions after Charlie. All okay. right. Uh, last week Ed, will you be quiet, Miss? Please? please let him let him speak. Uh, <clears throat> go ahead, Charlie. Last week I heard and I've heard this before that uh, a planned economy is no good and won't work and we want a free, free market. Yet, uh, during the week, I was thinking about that. And I studied the situation in World War II of the Allied Nations. What's your question? So, uh, Will Ellen, you please? Ellen, let him go. Will you please be quiet and sit be disruptive at every single Bible member or such another college? Oh, yeah. Can you do that? Thank you. And I was thinking about it in World War II. The three nations that had planned economies won the war, specifically England, Russia, and the United States. The government took over and operated the economy of those three countries. And the other things I've read is uh, countries such as Germany never enacted a war economy. You'll find that in many, many reference books. So it would have that would have led me to believe that a planned economy is the way to go. If they knew if they were under conditions of stress and test, the country chose a planned economy in order to emerge victorious. You come along and you say, we don't want a planned economy. Tell me why. You want something that doesn't seem to work. All right, go ahead, Justin, answer the question. Sorry, quickly, what was the uh, one sentence? Uh, he, he, he said, in times of war and national stress, we tend to nationalize the economy. And he's saying, if that works, why aren't we doing it all the time? Am I correct, Charlie? Um, so, uh, I don't know if it actually does work. I mean, I mean, it does work. I sense if you're going to like, you know, you won the shut war. down production, uh, and only make airplanes or, or whatever, if that's what you mean. Um, yeah, certainly that works if, if you, if you're going to force industry to do that. Um, I think certainly in, there are times of war that might have to call for, um, making, uh, and I'm I'm using quotes when I say this, and I and and the and and the I you know the I'm not even in a, you know the the Ayn Rand fan in me is is being ironic here, but I think probably in you know <laughs> certainly in wars maybe World War II is a good example, maybe your country does have to make sacrifices in quotes, um to ensure that your that your country survives and um and i don't think that any libertarian that lived through world war ii will disagree with me i think that hayek would probably agree with me uh well at least in, in principle like the idea of of, of like eh, but hayek also um criticized the idea that or he also one of his crit criticisms of that sort of nationalization is that you don't get rid of the nationalization uh you know when war is over you still you don't you don't it, it basically the government now owns all this industry it already has this this uh sort of monopoly then you're just waiting for a despot to come down a little later let's say adolf hitler to take advantage of these structures that the state had already built up and then you have uh the third reich so um is that supposed to mean anything 
I have no I idea. think it made sense to me. It uh, makes sense. <laughs> Tell me how that makes I can't figure it out. If I, if I had a thousand thousand dollars, I couldn't tell you what the heck that means. I'll explain. Now get up there. You told us. I'll explain in my that a plan economy Charlie. is no good. I'll explain and yet, in when my we be quiet, please. Yet the planned economy was the method that they used to win the war. So that the country it was war. No, they didn't. They had this like, Absolutely Japan, not. Had directed okay, so once you win the war, what's the purpose then? Uh, gentlemen, we're going to have to cut free. this question off. Ellen, go on no. up and ask your question. Absolutely Ellen, not. Ellen, you're, you're, like, you're the last questioner, Ellen. Go ahead and ask. You're the last one. We're going to rebuttals after this. This is the last one. We're going to rebuttals after Ellen. Okay. Uh, libertarians um, suggested, I, I really, uh, I guess if I would question the libertarian philosophy, it, I think that what we have is corporate libertarianism. What they've done is rewrite the tax laws to um, well, actually, I read today, you know, the putting in the Federal Reserve in 1913, you can look at a chart and show how the value of money was just really stable until they put in the Federal Reserve, and then inflation has gone like this ever since. So basically, we, what we have is right. libertarian for the banks, where they're, you know, they lower the interest rates, they raise the interest rates. Do you uh, have a question, And please? so um, I do think you know, wouldn't the lib would you agree, Justin, that the there might be a value in having an actual economic, you know, I guess open minded, almost academic debate between someone like Jan and you, you know, rather than having these decisions at the party level between an extremist right winger or a libertarian extremist or a that you know maybe politics and parties and group think is not necessarily the solution to to problems of wealth and poverty and increasing inequality you know to the extremes that and i mean i think libertarians i don't know we don't see the people on the street we we hear the economy and i think there's probably I'm sorry, what's really your question? A lot of lies in the economy. What's your question? Well, I just, I wouldn't, you, wouldn't it be, would you agree it would be a good idea to have, have actual economists reporting the news on whether the economy is healthy or not? Or is it just like, let's do this for the election and let's do that for the election? I mean, it's all propaganda of this side or that side and nothing seems to, it really is oppositional you know, okay. propaganda. All right, so uh, I think that, that, okay. Ellen, let him answer the question. So Javier Malay okay. is an economist. He was the gentleman who's just elected president of Argentina. Um, He got sort of his following by being able to comment on the financial economic conditions of Argentina from a libertarian perspective. Um, so um, now your question kind of didn't make sense. So I'm gonna maybe guess the rest of my answer out if it tries to answer your question, but partisan politics uh, to end poverty, the, I, I don't know what you mean by, uh, I would sure I'd, I'd debate Jan on a topic. I'd like to have a very uh, friendly debate Sure, I would debate Jan, have a good friendly debate with Jan. So I guess that answers one question you asked. Um, I'm not sure how part of ending homelessness, ending power, none of that stuff, you're never going to end it a thousand percent. There's You're going to have some amount of it somewhere. But you have to, if you're going to have social programs or you're going to have policies that to, that make it that they want to minimize those sort of things. You got to make them be smart. You got to have policies that encourage building homes and, and, and encourage people to start businesses and hire people. 
Uh, you have all these migrants who can't get jobs because they don't have work permits. They're also going to be priced out of the market because they also have a very high minimum wage now. So there's all sorts of, of things at play. Um, I, I hope I answered all these sort of questions you had. Forgive me if I did not. Okay, we're going to go to rebuttals now because Charlie just raised his hand for the question, but because now I've had some pushback from the things. I'm going to give everybody about five minutes, five to six minutes for rebuttals. Who's got hands for rebuttals up here now tonight? Anybody in the audience? All right, we got one, two. I know Charlie's got three. How about online? Just uh, I asked beforehand. Okay, uh, that's fine. I asked if I could I'm going to let you go first then, okay? You got five to six minutes. Me? Yes. Okay. Um, Show yourself if you can so we can see you. you okay. Thank you, Alexa, and I'm going to full screen you here in the restaurant. And uh, you got five to six. I'll give you six minutes. Can I ask why you like seeing my face so much? Well, we just, no, it's just, I, I wished every speaker who would, when they ask a question, usually likes, I would prefer that we see you when you, when you speak on Zoom. Now, I wish Justin would do the same thing, but he's uh, out, not like refused. <laughs> but uh, that's, he's explained himself earlier. Okay, uh, Alexa, go ahead. Uh, you've got the five to six minutes online. All right. Yeah. Well, first of all, um, the libertarians are very, 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 very opposed to the Federal Reserve precisely because they just control the money supply just like that. I mean, if you saw that graph in the uh, the one with uh, Milton Friedman and Joe Biden, you know, saying oh, Milton Friedman doesn't, you know, call shots anymore. Yeah. Now the dollar is worth like I, I mean it's it's purchasing power has gone down tremendously at least tenfold maybe a hundredfold um so I, I don't know what that's all about libertarians do not like the federal reserve and the idea that they can just tinker with the money supply and act like you know that doesn't impact things because it causes inflation and just is it's not good. Um, I'm trying to think. Um, other and then so regarding um thing with I guess capitalism and wealth hoarding and stuff. So like, first of all, like, and, and yes, there are billionaires with a lot of money who I'm kind of like, dude, like, maybe do some charity work if you want to improve your self image. Bill Gates. Mark Zuckerberg, etc. But I mean, they're not just like chilling with like, they're not just bathing in like pools of hundred dollar bills. A lot of that, you know, net worth comes from their businesses that they own, or at least they partially own if they're publicly traded. Um, again, not that that's and and I will say, like, okay, Elon Musk, for example, you might not like him or whatever, but okay, Elon Musk <laughs> has done more, you know, to further advance, you know, to prevent climate change by, you know, creating electric cars than any of us schmucks have. And, you know, you have, like, there was that meme with Mr. Beast, who, as you who is a YouTuber who likes to give back, including um, giving cataract surgery to 100 blind people, allowing them to see again, building 100 um, wells in Africa to help them, you know, give them clean drinking water to about half a million people. And then these, like, charities and these, like, stupid op-ed people are like, oh, man, Mr. Beast is a white savior. You know, how dare this white guy come in and you know actually help people that's we don't like that it's like okay so it's almost like people want to just vilify people who have more than them yeah, not... um it, it's kind of disgusting to me also i mean with the whole like people who were putting up signs that said 
we are the one percent um have you ever heard of this thing called trolling um i mean it, i highly i don't know i highly doubt any of those I highly doubt many of those people were actually one percenters. I think they wanted to get a rise out of you, and I think it worked. Um, so there's that. Oh, um, regarding Charlie's um, ridiculous claims that libertarians, you know, don't care about homeless people and blah, blah, blah. Well, actually, like, okay, so here's the thing. Um, hey, Alexa, you got about two minutes or less. Okay, yeah. Um, yeah, okay, so... First of all, a big problem with homelessness, uh, Justin and I were talking about this when you guys were offline, but, like, is the supply of housing, you know, if there aren't many, if there aren't enough homes, you know, if there aren't enough homes and there's this many ho people, then, you know, homelessness is going to exist. And we have these very strict zoning laws, especially in the city of Chicago, um, you know, there, there was some alderman bragging about how he never approved a building more than three stories high and it's like okay well that's i mean that's not good you're basically saying hey i don't want to allow people to you know i don't want to allow a building you know that has you know a hundred apartments i want it to only have 30 because reasons um you need to like deregulate that stuff um you also have the whole situation of like well, here's the other thing. Like, the government likes to withhold income from people. They they take it out of their paychecks before they even... You're not allowed, like... The government takes your money that they claim you owe in taxes before you even get that money and can spend it. And then usually sometimes, especially, like, with people in poverty, they'll withhold a bunch of money, but then they'll give it back at the end of the year. And it's like, well, those people who are in poverty could have used that money. Um, you know, at the time before it, you know, became less valuable and stuff. That is criminal stuff to me. It's disgusting. And the whole idea that, you know, yeah, uh, why are people supposedly, you know, there was a, actually there was a quote by economist Walter E. Williams um, that said, I believe that Justin showed, and it was talking about and if that wasn't it, it, he had a quote where he basically said, well, you know, socialism and communism, people profit off of oppressing man. Whereas with capitalism, you profit by, you know, pleasing them. You say, hey, here is this product or service. And they say, hey, I am willing to buy that for this price. So you are helping them. The last thing I'm going to say is um a quote from... Thomas Sowell, um, the first rule of politics, um, or well, oh, sorry, I screwed that up. Anyway, the first rule of economics is scarcity. There will never be enough of anything to satisfy everyone. The first rule of politics is to disregard the first rule of economics. Not everyone is going to get everything they want in life everything they think whether they think they're entitled to it or not and also bernie sanders you know socialist you know he owns four houses so i feel like he could let some homeless people crash in those you know what i'm saying so uh, okay just some of my thoughts all right we'd like to say thank you alexa who would like to go next okay hang on who would Can like to go here? next on the rebuttals? I'll go. Five minutes only, Ellen. All right. I'll give you time. You're six minutes. Okay, so go ahead, Ellen. All right. Yeah, um, I don't even remember your name, but thank you. You uh, gave me some ideas. Uh, you know, I'm Ellen Corley, and um, I appreciate your uh, reasoning there. Um, you know, I think I was talking to Joe Kopsik today. He's a left-wing libertarian. And we were, uh, you know, he's, we've got to know each other a lot. We, and, you know, do analyze these things 
as a dialectic. Like I was telling Jan, I, I'd love to talk more with Jan and hear her more on this because really we all have a, we have an opinion that we have to bring together like a dialectic, like Plato or Socrates dialectic. You know, let's, I was raised in a, a, a John Dewey school where, uh, you know, it was really this kind of open circle analysis all the time. And, and that is to me the ideal of democracy, of Continental Congress. Uh, my ancestors actually came over, you know, um, to Jamestown from Pocahontas on one side and there was, you know, the, the Hal Wyatt side and, but, you know, but you can also see the story that some really good ones of, there's this great new movie, The Promised Land, that shows what it was like to live in an evil, feudal world where the, the master is evil and raping all the servants. And then when they run away, the master, you know, catches them and burns them and kills them. And, and that's feudalism. And that's kind of what we're going to get back to. There, there is a book, Neo-Feudalism. And it's not not pretty, and I think that's what we have to realize. It's it's hard to understand what is democracy until you really. I, I think study in history, you know, economic, financial history, and see really the parts they're not telling us because that's you know if you grow up and just think, um, okay, libertarian father, we need to have everybody working. You know, our parents, my my parents were grew up in the depression, you know, and um, and they did work hard and and I could see their values for, you know, they didn't like bums and they didn't I just came from a Bill and Bob the story of the founder of AA going through in 1935 the depression. And I've been in AA 24 years. My grandfather was in AA came in too and um you know, just thinking about going through the depression and one guy's drinking and he's not supposed to be. And, you know, life is tough, but it, I don't think it's a matter of, I do, you know, now looking, we gave libertarian supply side economic theory a chance from the time of Reagan, you know, and all the deregulation and, you know, let them have the money and it'll trickle down. We've given it that's why we are the way we are and it, it's worse than we are admitting i, I was just talking to ron buttig the economist from larouche and um i mean i think they're they've got a lot to say about these things economics and uh you know the i just think we we need to have an amendment that our government doesn't get to lie to us about <laughs> right economics okay all right. You want to go next, Adam? All right, Adam. Bring up the water, eh? Always rehydrate, especially after all that sodium. Actually, I should put the timer on so I can see it. Uh, don't don't worry. I you you're pretty good. It's a loosey goosey night tonight, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Go ahead. Okay, so let's see where to begin. Um, we had a lot of problems. Uh, there, I know one of the statements we actually put out with the Libertarian Party in Chicago cited both U.S. foreign policy and bad economic policy from the government in Caracas in Venezuela as among the things that did not help with the migrant crisis. We also cited uh, you know, conservative U.S. politicians, as well as uh, progressive U.S. politicians using the issue as a political football for their own advantage. Um, and I think I'm a little out of practice since I did not stay with this like I did as an undergraduate, but once upon a time studied a great deal of Latin American history and politics. One of the things, Venezuela, even before Chavismo, had since the overthrow of the um, dictator uh, Marcos Menes Perez or Perez Menes, I'm getting out of practice. 
there had been an agreement to share the oil revenue going back to the early 1960s for public purposes. The three main parties, two larger ones and a smaller left-wing you know, piece of this coalition, agreed in the Punto Fijo Pact in the 1960s to share the oil revenue for public expenditure in Venezuela. And the problem is like a lot of petroleum exporting states, they found that whenever the oil price might go down, that they'd been spending like mad and they couldn't keep up with it. And this is what broke the main center left party, Acción Democrática, uh, or AD, you know, supporters of the ADECOs, um, the main sort of Christian democratic centrist and center right coalition, uh, whose acronym was C-O-P-E-I, COPE, and they were the COPEistas. And it was originally the 1960s Communist Party, and then later there was a breakaway left-wing party called uh, MAS, Movimiento a Socialismo, the movement towards socialism. And they all agreed to share this as part of the political patron-client network. They had PDVSA, the... Uh, uh, nationally owned Venezuelan oil exporting company. So uh, you know, the outlet in the United States is CIPCO. Um, and this had already failed through the 1960s, 70s, 80s, and 90s to alleviate poverty, even though we're talking about a country that co-founded OPEC. A lot of people forget that, that it, that was in large measure Venezuela's idea and not just the Arab monarchies. Uh, at the heart of OPEC, who were maybe you know more visible in the American imagination, um, and it ended up not doing the thing that it was supposed to do in Venezuela before Chavismo, and it has continued to fail to do that. The CIA has also done you know saber rattling there in a, a 2002 attempt to overthrow where there was it was interesting. Um, I think it's from Journeyman Pictures, Australian documentary company. You can find this, I think, for free on YouTube and a number of other outlets. Looked at how there were certain statements by the opposition parties that had been pre-recorded for the 2002 protest and coup attempt. And even if in general I would have sympathized with the opposition to Chavismo, that kind of foreign involvement ends up putting smudged fingerprints over any of that stuff. And this has happened both in the Bush the uh, younger you know, George Bush administration, and later in the Trump era, that that ends up putting the thumbs on the scale, and that is noticed in Latin American politics. Um, every now and then, people should uh, remember this the same way that I always like to point out the 2009 coup in Honduras. That was under Obama. I don't remember a lot of my Obamist friends going out, and I use the word Obamist advisedly, going out into the streets to defy him. Shit, when they came up with Occupy Wall Street, they couldn't even have the spine to suggest someone run against Obama in a presidential primary, which would have been the way that this is indicated, one would assume inside the Democratic Party that they had a problem with it. But that's their problem, not mine. Um, in much the same way that our former mayor, who was also former White House Chief of Staff under Obama and Assistant or Deputy Chief of Staff under Bill Clinton. Mayor Emanuel never took orders from a small party like the Libertarian Party. And it is a bit rich to suggest that that was what was in charge in the same way that I think it vulgarizes the term to say that, well, in a Reagan era economy where federal spending was probably still about 40% of GDP, that that was a libertarian uh, model of governance. Anyway, I used up about five minutes there. Tim, should I uh, wrap it up or throw one quote out there? Throw one more quote out there. I'm going to throw a quote out there. Actually, I'm going to give two. Charlie, mixed economy for Nazi Germany. Consult historian Richard Overy, O-V-E-R-Y, in case you doubt me. The Zaibatsu, Z-A-I-B-A-T-S-U, was something going back to the Meiji Restoration era in Japan, which was a connivance between the new Japanese militaristic government of the late 19th and early 20th century with what would become the top industrial firms. Mitsubishi had its origins, for example, as one of those Zaibatsu state private sector 
uh, partnerships. And the term il stato totalitario comes from Mussolini's Italy, where people said maybe the only good thing about it was that it was so corrupt and inefficient that it couldn't be as severe as the other totalitarian countries. And for, I find the correct tab as I have the smartphone with the rapidly multiplying set of tabs. Uh, okay, here's a quote from a less obvious choice. Uh, science fiction author, Frank Herbert. This is from Heretics of Dune. Bureaucracy destroys initiative. There is little that bureaucrats hate more than innovation, especially innovation that produces better results than the old routines. Improvements always make those at the top of the heap look inept. Who enjoys appearing inept? Anyway, thank you very much for the live leaving tonight. Okay, Charlie, you're next. Well, you really have to destroy all of them. Yeah, you have to destroy humanity. <laughs> Oh, oh, it's uh, somewhat, it's somewhat is. Well, I think every competition has rules. That's in for your uh, nice presentation there. And I'll be quick. Um, three things. Um, number one, zoning laws are given as the problem or the cause of homelessness in Chicago which I didn't know. Uh, only that separates residential from industrial type activities, but somehow I'm told tonight that that is the cause, the zoning laws are the cause of homelessness in the United States in Chicago. Um, I got to have much some doubts about that. Anyhow, number two, I also learned later on that so it's a, if somebody says, why am I homeless? Why am I poor? And I use the exact quote. He said, well, you can't expect to get everything you want in life. So I guess this is the libertarian response to poor people is, you can't expect to get everything you want in life. That's what I heard tonight. This is what you tell them. Uh, that's the why, I, why you are poor. Now, the other amazing thing is, I also learned tonight, I heard a comment there or something like, why am I poor? And it could be that you're not paid enough money. And the Libertarian Party says, we don't want a minimum, minimum wage. We want to pay people less. Now, how do you get rid of homelessness and eliminate poverty unless you pay people more money? Company it's called a living wage. And you're not going to make Chicago a company town. Um, right. But I've heard, and I don't even, I, now I'm misguided. Apparently, the home, because homelessness is something like city regulations, well, basically, a, a, a theory notion that you are entitled to something in life, like food and clothing. Shelter, <laughs> you can't expect everything. You want food, clothing, and shelter? <laughs> Who do you think you are? <laughs> we don't want to give people more money. We want to let people give, give them an opportunity to give them less money and get them to work for the same thing, to do the same amount of work for less money. And I'm supposed to embrace this. I uh, no. Can I think about these ideas and until we come again, guys. Thank you very much. All right, I'm going to go next. I got a solid ball flat. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, yeah. I'll, I'll go last. Then. You have a couple of rebuttals to throw out there on certain things. There was one meme in there that had like a Putin and and Biden kind of like looking at each other and there were arrows with different messages. I can't remember exactly what they were, but like Putin's was something like, you know, hurting people or something like that, which I think is a reference to the Russia Ukraine thing and you know the the dominant narrative, um, which I believe is is hundred percent false, is Putin and Russia are the big bad bully on the block. Ukraine 
Ukraine is the innocent little underdog and they're being bullied by Russia. Russia and Putin are the aggressor in the conflict. And I think it ignores everything that, for example, John, Professor John Mearsheimer has said years in advance about the uh, Russia-Ukraine situation, the NATO situation, how that fits into that. The, uh, the Maidan coup in 2014 facilitated by our own CIA and all that kind of stuff. Um, it, it's a little bit too boomer to put the Russians as the bad guys and the Ukrainians as the good guys and, and stuff like that. So I don't, I don't buy into the Putin, the Russian man bad Putin narrative on that. Um, as far as like uh, Jacob Hornber Hornberger, Hornberger, if I mispronounce that, you know, forgive me. Um, anybody on the, I, I'm mostly libertarian. Anybody on the libertarian side of, you know, politics who supports open borders is immediately disqualified. You can't do that. It's it's insanity at this point. What I think libertarians lack, perhaps even as deep as libertarian theory and philosophy is, an order of operations to get from point A to point B. They're very good at talking about what point B looks like. Oh, this is what the policy on this looks like. This is what the policy on that looks like. And oh, here's what the policy on this looks like. But given that we exist in particular circumstances now, I'm not aware that there's, you know, like libertarian theory that says, okay, you should do this first, then you should do this second, then you should do this third. A guy like Hornberger, I suspect, is somebody who says, despite the fact that there is a crippling welfare state and benefits and, you know, we have to do emergency room care that jacks up everybody's health care costs and we have to, you know, pay for all the public schooling for these people, we still need to open the borders and we still need to prevent Texas from keeping illegal aliens out of Texas and all that kind of stuff. Like, you can't do it. It's ridiculous. It's a loser issue for libertarians if they want to be at any way for um, pretending to be viable. Um, a little bit of a criticism on the Ron Paul meme with the Black Lives Matter movement. You know, when it was originally presented, it sounded like, oh, Ron Paul supported the actual Black Lives Matter movement. And when I asked the follow-up, when I asked the question about that, like, oh, what did you say? I did get the helpful clarification that Ron Paul, it was sort of tongue in cheek and he was trying to like co-opt it in a way to say, hey, abortion is bad because look at how many black babies are being aborted. Black lives matter, meaning black babies' lives matter. Let's not abort black babies. That's a little different from saying, oh, he supported the Black Lives Matter movement in and of itself. I think that was a little bit, you know, that could have been done better. Um, the Jorgensen meme about like, you know, if you only support the Second Amendment for people who look like you, I'm not even sure what that's in reference to. Um, if, for example, you think that the Second Amendment applies to American citizens and does not apply to illegal aliens, I don't know. I think that's at least up for debate. But if she's going to put it in racial terms, like you're kind of a bigot if you think people who don't look like you uh, don't deserve Second Amendment rights. I don't know. I suspect that's probably a straw man of some kind of argument somewhere. Um, a criticism of Malay that I have, he looks like he's a pretty cool libertarian guy, but I do, I do remember hearing or reading somewhere that, you know, he, as a good thing, like, oh, yeah, he wanted to dissolve or he did dissolve the Argentinian Central Bank. And that sounds good at first until you learn, like, except that he pegged the Argentinian currency to the American dollar. So what did he really do? He just traded one central bank closer to home to a larger central bank many thousands of miles away. I don't know that that was actually a pure libertarian choice there. Uh, Donald Trump oversaw the FBI on January 6th. If you believe Donald Trump had good control over the deep state, and the FBI is a part of the deep state, then you're delusional. The, the, the deep state, the FBI, the intelligence agencies, they were looking to undermine him left and right. So to pretend like, oh, look at Donald Trump was in charge of the FBI. Like, no, not, not, not exactly. Um, I, I would argue also, that, and then there was one other thing about like, uh, 
it was a state's rights meme and and it was like the one button and the other button with the superhero guy or whatever that was where it's like you know um i'd have to look into the the actual substance of the knocking trump off the ballot but you can't possibly believe that um states starting to knock people off the federal the the the, the national ballot is it in any way lead to good places? That's going to lead to civil war if you let that go out of control. Um, the, the definitions of insurrection, I'm just gonna presume that that means that uh, you believe that Donald Trump incited an insurrection. He commanded his loyal minions to storm the Capitol and overthrow the government. If you really believe that, you, you need to listen to Glenn Greenwald and System Update. He's actually a left-wing guy, but you know, he understands it wasn't an insurrection. You can't possibly think it was a serious insurrection, an organized attempt to overthrow the government. That's just absurd. And then the final thing, and then the final thing I'll mention as sort of like a housekeeping thing is um, it really would be good for during the question and answer period for it just to be questions instead of like quasi rebuttal and speeches, you know, I- We, we did preference. that tonight because of the, it was just a little more loose. Like, I, I get you. I, I would have tightened it down had we had a lot more people. Gotcha. But I understand. One full at a time. The resurrection. That's supposed to be next week, Joe. All right, well, let's, sir. All right. Just, Joe, Charlie, right. get up there and rebut. It was a riot that I don't think was well, as serious. Small, little, All right, yeah, Charlie. Yeah, it was a yeah, riot Charlie, that was not as, little, it was not as, here, let me let me finish. Let me finish the sentence, Charlie. Let me finish the sentence. The the January sixth was a riot. One full at a time. January sixth was a riot that was not as bad as the BLM riots that burned down police stations and courthouses. That's correct, Charlie. All right. Yes. You know, in this debate about capitalism and socialism, we're forgetting one thing here out of everything, and that is the human condition. And for me, that human condition is best defined in, in the scripture by uh, what Jesus said about us, that we're all sinners, that we all have proclivity to corruption. We all have proclivity to power. We all have proclivity to do mean things to each other and it's our choice whether we do those things or not personally god gave us the uh, freedom to accept or reject them and second our governments need to also exercise that right but that doesn't mean we can't have government personally if any of you guys look at the federalist papers there was quite an extensive argument as to how much government we should have and how much we shouldn't have and that's why they passed the Constitution of the United States, along with the Bill of Rights. Now, for those of you who are pure capitalists, you've got to remember one thing about Adam Smith, who also wrote a book about the same time we had a revolution in 1776 called The Wealth of Nations. He spoke about something called the commons, and he was also for some form of taxation to support that commons. Now, whether you want that commons to be all-inclusive with health care and government benefits and government provided housing, we got that. And it seems to be working okay in Sweden right now. But they also have a tax rate of about 50%. If you want a low tax rate, the first thing you want to do is get rid of the corruption in the capitalist system and get rid of all the special preferences that corporations are now getting in the, in, in the resistance of government regulations. A lot of times your various libertarian People who back all this uh, libertarian stuff with no regulation are the very same people like the Koch brothers who want to skirt the mining regulations, who want to skirt the EPA, who also don't want to be taxed too much. Why? Because certain businessmen who have a large monopoly are greedy. However, that's not every one of them. That is not every one of them. There were some people in the past who've been millionaires who have given their wealth to previous causes. And there have been corporations that have cheated and lied to people, as well as people who have cheated and lied to people. And you're gonna have that, whether it be under communism or socialism, or even capitalism. The thing is, which one 
works the best to keep the least out. And I think that's capitalism because it is a system that's based on trust. You pay a price, you get a service. If you don't like that service, that guy goes out of business. If your government to protect property and protect civil rights and protect other things, they do have a function. Yes, we need a police department. Yes, we need a fire department. Yes, we need public schools. Yes, we need roads. Yes, we need other things. We have a much more complex society today that requires a larger government. Now, if taxation is theft, well, I still look at it as taxation is rent. And that means if you're going to live here, you got to pay your way to get here. And if you're using the uh, taxable benefits much more, like say a Jeff Bezos at Amazon, you should pay your way just like the rest of the citizens do. I am not saying don't tax the rich. Now, as far as homelessness is concerned, there is a lot to be said about zoning laws. There is, Charlie, because I've looked up the old zoning code in Algonquin. They have most of the districts out in the burbs designated as R1 or single family homes. And there's been a lot of people I know who wanted to, you know, build, take a garage in the back and put it into a garage apartment or build a second or a third story so they could bring and move people in. This is exactly what Chicago was doing in the early teens and 20s. Besides, Chicago has faced this immigration problem before. It was called the 1850s, the influx of the uh, meatpacking and all the jobs there. It was called the Great Migration when all the Blacks came up here for a long time. And for some reason, we did manage to accommodate them. It may have taken a few years, but we did manage to accommodate. The reason people want to come to this country is because it's safe, it's stable, and it's got freedom. And frankly, they do have to go through our vetting process, although right now there has not been comprehensive immigration reform. If you remember under Ronald Reagan, he did bring all, he did have immigration reform. He let those people who were in the United States at the time of the passage of the bill become United States citizens. He also put some controls on the border. We haven't seen this since the 1985, and we haven't seen anything like it. It seems like both political parties just want to push it around as a problem so that they can get their own political advantage to each other. And the thing is, it's like, what I'm simply saying is this, before we throw the baby out with the bathwater and say all government is evil, just remember, it's government of the people and by the people shall not perish from this earth. But people are sinners in need of a savior. That's why I'm a Christian, and that's why I'm also heading to church tomorrow. Thanks a lot. Have a good night. Uh, Justin, you're going to get close now, and we'll close out the college. All right. <clears throat> so I'm going to do a quick uh, few more memes here. So first off, uh, Adam, I... Uh, thank you for bringing up the LPC statement as I'm not as involved as I used to be in the Chicago chapter. I did, I was, I forgot all about that. So thank you for bringing that up. Uh, the black lives matter, Ron Paul meme. Uh, I will, I will admittingly, admitting, admittingly admit that I shared it quasi ironically. Um, I don't think that, uh, I mean, he said, he said the words, I support the Black Lives Matter movement. So I'll take his word for it. Um, but, uh, I, he, I'll just, I'll just leave it at that. Uh, Trump, uh, all those definitions of insurrection, I will certainly apply to the riots in 2020, uh, after George Floyd protests. Um, as far as Trump inciting a riot, I certainly he did. Um, he 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 spent months uh, saying the election was stolen when he hit, they offered no substantial proof. Um, he there's also uh, maybe maybe he didn't have direct collaboration, but certainly uh, three percenters, Proud Boys, Oath Keepers, and other organizations were. Uh, trying to do something um and i don't think we ever addressed the road to serfdom um i just want to clarify that uh 
the principle that I think that the libertarians alive during World War II was was that <clears throat> they definitely wanted to defeat Nazism and definitely do what they could to beat them. Uh, certainly, I don't think Hayek would want to prescribe the road to serfdom per in perpetuity after World War II. But I hope that uh, you guys got what I was saying with that. So here is uh, a couple more. Whoops. All right. Is free trade good? Well, if Krugman, Friedman, Smith, and Henry George dislike it, then I guess it's settled. Bernie and Trump think it's bad. Huh. Vietnam is embracing uh, capitalism. And uh, as you can see, um, market reforms, um, slashed subsidies, farmers reclaimed rights, private property. Wow. We yeah, can repulate, we can repulate, we can replicate this in the United States. Rights are not gifts from government. Okay, uh, Justin. Uh, uh, Anna Shufflebein had raised her hand before. Uh, are you done with your things? I'll let you comment again at the end of the at the end of the day. If and she wants to answer, ask a question, I'll I'll certainly. I think she uh, wants to do a rebuttal, right, Anna? Yeah, I just had some a few things to say. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, so I just wanted to say um, I have like a con almost a conservative uh, viewpoint on some values, um, and I when I canvass, like I can talk. Uh, uh, with conservatives and agree on certain things and certain sensitive topics uh, such as abortion, you know, individual rights, and nobody wants unwanted babies. So the Illinois Green Party, we have that in our platform. We don't want unwanted baby. We don't want unwanted babies. We only want wanted babies. Um, but we all always stand by individual rights. Um, which is also part, it's also like a libertarian uh, value for individual and civ civil liberty rights. Um, I also believe that, you know, in the Second Amendment, it is the Second Amendment, um, but there are items like the 1968 definition of a gun, of a gun uh, when they have to register to be a gun dealer. And it, that 1968 definition also closed the uh the ban the loophole for the gun shows so it would be at your principal place of business is where the sales would transact at um but um you know having that value is important and it's important um to me um to have those individual rights um but we can say all we want about all the issues but if we don't have air and water um secured we really face a big issue. Um, air and water are not negotiable. Um, so I know um, some, most of the people here know I work really hard with the Green Party to make sure that these environmental values are coming through because it is imperative um, that we take care of them. Even if somebody doesn't believe in climate change and there's always room for improvement, these are again, non-negotiable items that we, that we face. Um, and so I also wanted to talk about the Liberty Caucus for the Green Liberty Caucus that is happening. I'll drop a note in there. Um, so that is, um, a, you know, a thriving block that we have here. So um, we welcome to unify with all of our allies um, and anybody who is concerned about the air and the water, um, making it available um, and making sure it's available for years and generations to come. We welcome to unify. It's 2024. It's the election time. The time is literally right now. It literally starts next Tuesday for petitioning uh, for uh, green candidates to get on the ballot to help the voters give choices and help secure wins in making sure this air and water that is non-negotiable is, is valued as it should be which is really important. But that's all I had to say for today. I just wanted to say hello to everybody. Hey, good to see you. And I, I'm going to try to make it to your talk and, and good luck to you with your signature collection. Um, I know it's very tough. And me and you, and I don't know how...
I don't, are you tight with Will Gazzardi at all? Do you have any connection with Will Gazzardi? Um, I think we tried, we were trying to uh, work together on an issue. I don't think, I think the timing was off or just didn't connect. Um, but yeah, well, he's out, he's out in Chicago, right? Yeah. Uh, I only, I only mention him cause he's my, uh, my rep, but he's also the progressive caucus co-chair in the, uh, general assembly. I've been putting pressure on him for years to, hey, man, you're a Democrat and you're a progressive. Why aren't you like taking the lead on ballot access reform? And I think I've annoyed him. So I think if I can find perhaps somebody that's uh, more that, that it, maybe if somebody more sympathetic to his own politics might approach him, somebody who's much more attractive than myself maybe we can make headway with the progressives and hold the Democrats to actually making democracy, uh, you know, a thing in Illinois. It's like, it's like the waffle, it's like waffle house de-emphasizing waffle. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, <laughs> we should, uh, annoy. So Will Gazzardi. <laughs> I think we have different definitions of a progressive to me. A progressive is not in a war party. Well, that's his. I, I can I can respect that. I'm only using the words he described for himself, but uh, I can I can certainly respect that. Um, <laughs> yeah, maybe you'll get the big. And uh, as you know, you know this is a blue Democratic state. Uh, for a long time, we have blue the the Democrats had a majority, and you know we face in the U.S. House of Representatives uh, over ten thousand signature requirements needed where de Democrats and Republicans generally needed a, less than a thousand. And so this is, this is the Democrats rule. Uh, we have to get so much more signatures and, and it's, it, people think that might be the peace party, but they're really a war party. We all know this or should, should know this or might know this in the back of our head. Um, we need power of the people. We need to unify outside of the, these corporate parties. This is this is this is where we have these values of air and water. We need to put everything aside. We need to make sure like these non-negotiable items are going to be taken care of. And this is 2024. This is the time to do it. So we need to get together and do signature petitions um, to make sure that we get these these values on the ballot and also help establish. For next time, as you know, are you are you doing what's going on with your petitioning drive? So we're uh, the we are doing our presidential um, petition starting on Tuesday, and that's the only statewide. We're already we're the place the other place we're established is Cook County. We've got our state's attorney candidate and clerk of the circuit court candidate going to be on the uh, general ba uh, ballot in Cook County. And uh, me and three other of my comrades were elected as ward committee persons in the city of Chicago. So um, that's what that's that's the most recent news with us. You know, it's going to be hard. It's going to be like twenty five thousand signatures countywide or, or for or, uh, statewide. Mm -hmm. uh, and for these small parties, that's a lot. Mm -hmm. And it's it's certainly. Um, it, it, it eats up a lot of resources. Um, you know, these parties not only have lower, you know, have smaller, uh, m not only manpower, but financial resources. So it's very, very hard and uh, it's unfair. So. Okay. You want to wrap us up? All right. Um, Brother Tucker, uh, did you have any final comments? Because I know they're getting Nancy to close the restaurant. Here. Uh, no, I, I lost track of time and I apologize. Uh, but thanks for coming out, guys. And uh, well, we created a rift in the space-time continuum tonight with your, you know, dank memes. Yeah. Well, thanks for coming, and uh, hopefully we'll talk soon. All right, and I will uh, just say to everyone. Also, one thing from the Caracas or Venezuelan example and the Argentine example, inflation in the hundreds or thousands of percent to help is the thing that can really undermine your economy, not just, oh, 7.5% inflation. And on that happy note, uh, I guess we will adjourn the meeting. Thank you, Justin.
to thank you, my fellow College of Complexes students and faculty members, and happy Purim until next time.